Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're going to be going over this week's slate of NFL games and predicting who's going to come out on top in each game. Before we get started though, please drop a quick like and a sub on today's video. It would really help my channel grow. I'd really appreciate that. With that said, let's dive right into the video and I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to my week 12 NFL predictions. Uh, we're going to be going through each game and just diving into each game and, and, and uh, determining who I have taking each game. Obviously, Thanksgiving Day games this week coming up on Thursday, so some pretty big football to be played. We've got Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, pretty big game the AFC North. Uh, both teams are, are, are tightly packed for that, uh, you know, Playoff race, uh, Pittsburgh sitting at 5-4-1 after a, ch a loss to the charge last week, and the Cincinnati Bengals at 6-4, and four, uh, coming off a pretty good game against the Las Vegas Raiders. I like the Bengals in this one. I just think uh, at the end of the day, uh, the Bengals are the better team, and especially at home, uh, where they've got that home crowd, they're going to have a little bit more of an, of an advantage. I don't like Pittsburgh's offense too much. I know they scored a lot of points last week, uh, but that was more or less you know, how that game went uh, against the Chargers. I just like Cincinnati's complete team a little bit more, although Pittsburgh is really good defensively and could definitely cause some problems for Cincinnati. Cincinnati is able to get to the quarterback with Trey Hendrickson and is able to pressure the quarterback and stop the run. They'll be able to win that game. So I like them uh, next week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now we've got uh, the Tennessee Titans and the New England Patriots, and this is a really interesting game um, because this is a Tennessee Titans team that's eight and three, top of the top of the AFC uh, playoff race. Uh, and then you've got the New England Patriots, who are seven to four, right on their tails. And to be honest, Tennessee should should have been, should be the favorites going into this game. But you know they lost a really tough game against the Houston Texans last week. And the New England Patriots have won four or five in a row at this point, and are arguably the the league's hottest team. So I'm going to take the Patriots in this one. They're running the football really effectively. They're playing the best defense in the NFL right now. Um, and Mac Jones is doing what he needs to do to get the Patriots where they need to be. Now we've got prob probably the worst matchup of the week. We've got the Jets and the Texans, uh, a game that really has little meaning for the playoffs, but it ha does have meaning for, um, you know, the uh, the draft. Um, Houston obviously came off a win against tech, the t Tennessee Titans last week. Really big win for them. Tyron Taylor looked really fantastic at quarterback. And the New York Jets, with their quarterback inconsistencies, they actually put up a pretty good fight against the Miami Dolphins last week, losing 24-17 with Joe Flacco. Um, I liked what Elijah Moore was able to do last week. And although the Houston defense was really good against Tennessee, I think that they will struggle against the Jets. I know Michael Carter is out, uh, but I thought that the Jets played good enough defensively last week and they were able to uh, do what they needed to do, um, especially with a Houston team that has struggled all year. I think this is, this, is, this is a game where the Jets can get the win. Now we've got the Chargers and the Denver Broncos. Um, and I think this is a massive game. I think if you lose this game, you're out of the you're out of the playoff race. If you're in the very uh, very tight, very uh, competitive AFC West, I think the Chargers get the win. They played very well against uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They got the win. I mean, Justin Herbert versus whoever's playing quarterback for the Denver Broncos. Uh, I don't care if it's Drew Locke. I don't care if it's Teddy Bridgewater. Um, at, at this point in the season, right? They're, they're they both haven't really performed well. Or at least Teddy Bridgewater hasn't performed a lot. I don't think Drew Locke would be any better. Uh, Denver is all about their defense. They're all about uh, how well can we play defensively. We can run the ball pretty well. And we can control time possessions. That's that's how that's how they want to play football. But the Chargers can score from anywhere on the field, and I just like their advantage at quarterback with Justin Herbert. Now we've got the Browns and Baltimore Ravens. Uh, with Lamar Jackson back for the Ravens, it's going to be in, an interesting game, especially with Cleveland potentially getting Kareem Hunt back. Um, that Cleveland offense is definitely going to be better. That Baltimore, that Baltimore team really were able to get a massive win against the Chicago Bears last week. Obviously, no Lamar Jackson. They were out. With, uh, he was out with a sickness. Um, Cleveland, uh, you know, they they're now at six and five. They need to win this game if they want to continue sneaking around that playoff picture. Uh, so this is a big game for both teams. I think that running the ball is going to be who can run the ball better wins this game, um, and who can stop the run better is going to win this game. I think Baltimore is going to be able to do that. I think they're slightly a better run deep team. Um, and especially with Lamar Jackson back, I think they'll be able to get the win. I just don't like how Cleveland's been so up and down lately. Um, although they did beat the Lions last week, uh, I just I like Baltimore in this one. Now we've got Dallas and Las Vegas. Uh, this is going to be interesting because Dallas, obviously, without uh, some of their receivers, CeeDee Lamb out, um, Amari Cooper was out last week. I think that's probably going to be this week too. Las Vegas um, has been in an interesting spot. They've been kind of up and down over the past few weeks. Started off the season really well. Uh, but I think Dallas at home on Thanksgiving Day with Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield, depending on if he's able to play too, I think they get the win. I really like what Micah Parsons is doing on defense. I think he's ha he has this defense playing really, really well. And I just really like the Dallas Cowboys right now um, at home against Las Vegas. I know they beat the Chiefs last week, but I think this could be a bounce back game for them. Now we've got Buffalo away on Thanksgiving Day. 
Um, you know, playing the New Orleans Saints in the Superdome, um, I think that Buffalo gets the win. I know Buffalo struggled last week um, and ended up losing to the Colts, but the Saints without, you know, a real quarterback. And Trevor Semyon's been playing up and down and kind of eh for them. I, I don't think the Saints really stand a chance. Um, so I like Buffalo in this one. I like their defense, and I think that this will be another bounce-back game for them, kind of like with Dallas. Losing a tough game last week, bouncing back, I think, against a softer opponent in the Saints. I think Buffalo can get the win. This is a really interesting game here. Tampa Bay came, came off a win against the Giants last week, 30-10 to 10 on Monday Night Football. And you've got the Indianapolis Colts, who are just running, 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 and keep running the ball. And Jonathan Taylor is arguably the best running back in the league because of it. He's single-handedly taking them to wins. So it's very different offenses here. It's an Indianapolis offense that wants to run the ball all day long. And the thing is, Tampa Bay's defense is good at stopping the run. They're one of the better run-stopping teams in the league. It's different when it comes to Jonathan Taylor, though. But when it comes to the offense, uh, Tampa Bay is going to put up points, and they're going to put up a lot of points because they can score quickly. So I don't know how I like a run-based team versus a passing attack team, especially when that passing attack team has been very good lately. Um, and Tampa Bay has lost some games against Washington. They have lost... Uh, they've dropped a few games against some teams that, you know, normally we would think that they beat. But I just think Indianapolis won't have enough um, on the outside. And Carson Wentz, if you look at his stat line last week, it wasn't that pretty. Um, so if Carson Wentz plays good football and the Colts can control the clock and score touchdowns using the run game, then maybe. But I still like Tampa Bay in this one. Now, this is a really interesting game. Carolina with Cam Newton are looking really good. They lost to Washington last week. And the Dolphins are coming off another good performance. I th thought Tua Tungo by Lowe played really, really well. And it's going to be all about how can you uh, pressure the quarterback and make the quarterbacks feel uncomfortable in this game. With Cam Newton, it's containing him in the pocket and getting to him. And Miami did a good job getting to the quarterback last week with two sacks. Um... And more importantly, Carolina, they, they've got some big-time pass rushers. You know, uh, Hassan Reddick's having a solid season. Um, if he can get to Tua Tungvaluwa, that can cause all of the issues. But if Miami's able to play their, their game, uh, you know, and throw the ball quickly, get the hands out of Tua's hands really, get the ball out of Tua's hands really quickly, they could, they could find some success. But more importantly, how can they stop, um, you know, guys like Christian McCaffrey and, and uh, Cam Newton and DJ Moore? That's going to be the real difference maker. So I think Carolina's probably a little bit more of a skilled team, but Miami has won three in a row. And Carolina is definitely an, uh, an opponent that they can beat. So I like the Dolphins of this one. I like how they've been playing. And if Tua continues playing that, that smart brand of football, the Dolphins could get a sneaky win here uh, against Carolina. Now we've got Atlanta and Jacksonville. And these are two teams that are really struggling at this point in the season. Both of them are well out of the playoff race. Um, Atlanta, you know, has just continued to, to, to just blow up in their face kind of thing. Um, they lost a, a shutout loss to uh, the New England Patriots. And then you've got Jacksonville, uh, who lost big time to the 49ers. Both teams are really at the bottom uh, here. And I think Jacksonville probably gets the win. I think at home, Trevor Lawrence against a, a, a pretty rough defense here in, in, in Atlanta. I think they get the win. I think that Matt Ryan does all he can, but he doesn't have his weapons. And Kyle Pitts hasn't been playing well of late. Um, you know, Cordero Patterson uh, was injured last week. Calvin Ridley's out. Um, so I like Jacksonville's one, but at the end of the day, this game doesn't really matter. I, I think Jacksonville will get the win, though. Now we've got Detroit and Chicago on Thanksgiving Day. Once again, depends who's playing quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Obviously, um, you know, Justin Fields had to, had to leave that game last week. Andy Dalton came and played pretty well. And Detroit, you know, hasn't won a game all year, but I think this is the game they do get the win. I think that uh, if they run the ball effectively and Jared Goff, uh, Jared Goff comes back um, and he's able to do what he needs to do, um, and defensively, I think this will be a close game. I don't really like either team in this one too too much, but I think Detroit he get a sneaky win at home on Thanksgiving Day. I'll be rooting for them. Um, so we'll see we'll see how that goes. But I like Detroit in this one. Now we've got Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants. The Giants lost a really bad game last week. The Eagles won a big game against the Saints. Um, and the Eagles are sitting at five and six. They're in a spot where if they win a few games, uh, they could get in the playoffs. Um, so I think I like the Eagles in this one. The Giants have been struggling all year. Their offense looks broken. They fire Jason Garrett. Um, they're they're in disarray. And the Eagles have been playing some good football. They've been playing really well defensively. And more importantly, Jalen Hurts looks like he's doing his thing. Um, not necessarily through the air, but through the through the ground. They also have gotten healthier. Miles Sanders got back last week. Jordan Howard still looking productive on the ground. So they're 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 a potent running run heavy team. Um, and I think they're a team that can get a sneaky win here against the Giants. Now we've got Minnesota and we've got San Francisco. Minnesota um, coming in at 5-5. Five and five. San Francisco also coming in at 5-5. Five and five. And this is going to be a game that is about two teams that like to run the football and that can throw the ball. And for me, it's who's going to be able to throw the ball better. We, both, we know both teams can run the ball effectively, but I like Minnesota's aerial attack a little bit more. And Kirk Cousins, if you look at the stats, how he's been playing the past few weeks, he has been on fire. So watch out for Minnesota. I think that they can get the win against San Francisco. Now we've got the Rams and the, and, and the Green Bay Packers on Sunday. This is definitely going to be one of the better games of the week. Green Bay coming 
off a tough loss against the Minnesota Vikings, losing by three points. You get the Rams off the bye week. Uh, they were struggling coming in uh, uh, over the past uh, few weeks of the season. They lost to Tennessee, uh, and they lost to the 49ers last week, uh, or two weeks ago, rather. So they, they, they've had two rough losses, and those were big-time losses. Those, those weren't small losses, but Cooper Cup is back. Um, you know, and uh, Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford, they're back. Um, and with Odell Beckham hopefully clicking in that offense after another uh, week of practice, uh, look for the Rams to, to, to try and get some, some momentum going. But I still think the Packers get the win at home, at Lambeau, uh, on a Sunday afternoon. I'm taking the Packers every time. I really don't care who they're playing. There's something about Lambeau that's really hard to come and play at. And we saw the Rams go to Lambeau in the playoffs last year. They couldn't get the win. Uh, sure, it's a different team, and I think this Rams team is better, but I think that they, they might be able to bounce back and, and build a little momentum moving into, into Week 13. Uh, but I like the Packers in this game. And then we've got Seattle and Washington. And uh, the Seahawks are, at this point, they're, they're, they're out of the playoff picture. And they're out of the playoff race. They, 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 don't, they don't really have a chance. Um, you know, Russell Wilson has not looked good since his comeback. He has looked better for the offense. But overall, without Chris Carson for the rest of the season, it's going to be tough. Uh, their run game really isn't there. And their defense isn't there either. I think Washington gets the win. They, they, they won a game against Carolina last week. T Taylor Heineke is playing some good football. I like what this defense kind of able to do. And... Uh, Antonio Gibson's having a good game, uh, or he's having a good season on the ground. So I like what Washington's able to do offensively. Um, and although they did lose Chase, Chase Young, um, I still like what they're going to be able to do against Seattle, who's been struggling all year. And at this point, their season's more or less over. So with that said, those are my Week 12 game picks. What do you think about them? Uh, leave your thoughts and comments on them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And with that said, that's pretty much going to end the video for today. Did you agree with my analysis? Why or why not? Leave your comments and thoughts in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Also, if you're new around here, please drop a like and a sub on today's video. I'd really appreciate that. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, see ya.